The Electric State, a post-apocalyptic road trip through a tech-drenched 1990s. Think Danger Days, Fallout, and a mix of Black Mirror. Is this the next TTRPG for your table? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hi, hello, it's Turk from the Grouch Couch, and today we're delving into The Electric State, a dystopian TTRPG from Free League. And you guys know how much I love Free League. They made Morkborg and other kinds of stuff like that. We love them around here. This TTRPG is based on Steinman, Simon Stettenhag's iconic art book and book in general. The game combines emotional storytelling with streamlined mechanics. It was fully funded in 2023 and is already making waves as one of 2024's most anticipated RPGs of the year. There's also going to be a Netflix movie or adaptation on the way in 2025 starring Millie Bobby Brown and Chris Pratt, believe it or not. There's also a book that I've been reading and it's just so good. So we're here in a good place. Today we're going to cover everything that you need to know to decide if this game is worth your time and money or if it's one for you to just move on. And remember, if you do decide to pick it up, you can use our drive through RPG link down in the description to grab your copy and help support the show. The book and the price. So The Electric State itself is a book of 236 pages of dystopian brilliance. There's art in here and all their kinds of stuff. I mean, it's packed with detailed lore of the world, simple mechanics, and all of the art from Simon Stottenberg, and it literally is a feast for the mind. So the digital version, I believe, is about 25 or 15 bucks. You can get it over on Drive Through RPG, and I do believe the full copy, you can actually get it, the physical copy for your shelves, off Amazon and Free League's actual site from anywhere from 50 to $60. The quality and replayability of this book, I mean, the price is just completely justified. The artwork is haunting and beautiful, and it captures this desolation of eerie beauty beauty and collapsing America. It does kind of remind me of like some weird, like off-putting AI art, but it's not. And it's really good. And I, I, I think it's done really well for what it is. Um, each page does also feel like a piece of art that you're going to want to frame and put up in your house if you're into this kind of art style. The book and the price, is it for you? Do you love visually stunning atmospheric books? Are you into collecting beautifully designed RPG manuals? Then yes, this one's a keeper. Nine out of 10. The world. This book is set in an alternate 1990. The Electric State offers a haunting vision of America's collapse. Advanced tech like drones and robots and neocasters dominate the landscape, but society has crumbled. Uh, picture empty highways and eerie, huge megastructures and forgotten cities. I'm sure you can see by all of this art that's probably behind me. This world explores themes of isolation and technical, technological dependence and survival. It's chilling yet nostalgic in a weird kind of way. Um, it's perfect, though, for any fans of a dystopian storytelling kind of series. And it's not just about surviving, said Apocalypse. It's actually about, you know, kind of like a reflection on humanity's relationship with the technology that we all kind of use and love. It's really topical for what we kind of got going on here now in 2024. Um, it kind of makes this a little bit more personal when you're playing this game. As a quick start tip, if you do decide to pick it up, um, there is a timeline in Chapter 1 that could provide players with a snapshot of this eerie world. And it's kind of a great way to immerse yourself in the setting right from the start. The world, is it for you if you're into atmospheric, story-driven games with rich world building than the setting of this? Especially if you're into dystopian apocalypses is, yes, for you. The story, 9 out of 10. The main mechanic. So this game revolves around what they call a journey. Uh, players are travelers moving from one stop to another all the way across America. And each stop in itself is kind of like a self-contained adventure. And it offers unique challenges and character growth for each stop. Think about each stop they go on as being kind of like a one-shot. And there is a pre-written campaign in this book called Into the Dust. 
and it is an excellent introduction into the world itself. But the game also does provide loads of tools for you to create your own journeys and stops. Whether you want a quick three-stop adventure for you and your players to go through, or a sprawling 12-stop epic going from one side of the world to the other, the choice is completely yours, and it's all here to do. The journey itself in this book, though, is the real goal. As every cliche says, it's not the destination, but it's about the experiences and the connections that your players make along the way. Um, so even if they have a goal to get over here to meet back up with their family or whatever, it, the whole story is still going to be about getting there. As a quick start tip, do start with the Into the Dust uh, for a smooth introduction, then use the journey tables in Chapter 5 to kind of customize your own adventures along the way if you decide to expand from there. Is the journey mechanic for you? If you enjoy episodic storytelling with strong character development, the journey mechanics will pull you in, and they are for me, so could be for you. The rules. So this is powered by Free League's Year Zero engine, if you're familiar with that. Um, the mechanics are straightforward. You roll d6s, and a 6 is a success. But the electric state kind of spices things up with these bliss and tension mechanics that they've added in, which add emotional and kind of like psychological layers to the narrative-driven thing that they're doing here. The bliss tracks your character's addiction to the neurocaster, while tension affects interpersonal strain between the travelers and the people that you meet and these systems drive character driven narratives and kind of keep all the stakes high and I like that it encourages this narrative story that they're doing here. The mechanics for sure prioritize story and character over complex rules, making it easy to learn and highly engaging if you're into that kind of thing. As a quick start tip, start small with basic roles to get players comfortable with all of the mechanics, then gradually introduce bliss and tension to deepen the narrative experience to not overwhelm them, um, because it really is easy to start, and then it does get spicy as things go on. So, are these mechanics for you? If you prefer narrative narrative driven games with lightweight mechanics then this system offers the perfect balance of simplicity and depth um, altogether. Character creation. All right, building a traveler here is intuitive and it offers plenty of depth. There are a total of like 10 archetypes you can pick from. Um, there's like a drone pilot, a runaway kid, um, and another one that weirdly looks like me 10 years ago. So that's odd. But they all add distinct strengths and story hooks to the game itself. Your character's backstory and personal flaws are central to the game, which I like a lot if you've watched our shows around here. The Neurocaster um, isn't just like gear, but it's kind of like a core part of who your character is and how they navigate the world. And the system excels at creating characters who kind of feel real in this world. Um, and they have their own personal strengths and complex relationships relationships that they all kind of get through. As a quick start tip, though, use the pre-generated characters for a quick start if you're wanting to just give the game a test, but do encourage the players that you have with you to customize them to fit a little bit more of what they're interested in. So it's like you take this thing that's already built and then you just add a little bit of spice on it. Is this character creation for you if you do love creating flawed and more story-heavy characters, I mean, we're not metagaming here, then the electric state provides plenty of inspiration and flexibility. I would say yes. Character creation for me, 9 out of 10. Abilities. So I'm sure that you've heard me say neurocasting a couple of times in this review, and you're like, Turk, what the heck is that? Well, neurocasting actually allows the players to interact and connect with a digital world. They can hack systems or even experience these like digital environments. And it is a powerful but dangerous tool for them to use. Um, if they overuse it, it leads to like bliss and addiction to it. Um, it's kind of fun. And this neuro casting mechanic kind of adds a unique almost like cyberpunk layer to the whole thing which I think this being very tech heavy makes sense and it blends technology and horror kind of seamlessly. Um, as a quick start tip for this encourage your players to test out neurocasting early in any of your games to kind of discover the strengths and risks of it and they can remember what's going on in it um, and it will add depth to the role play as the story evolves. Is neurocasting the abilities for you if you do enjoy a tech-based gameplay uh, with psychological kind of twists and drawbacks from using abilities? Uh, neurocasting does add a fascinating dimension to the game, and if you're into cyberpunk or anything like that, then this will be right up your alley. For me, 8 out of 10. Combat. Also, hazards. 
Combat is tactical. It's fast-paced and dangerous. Um, there's always a level of strategy here, um, and the elemental hazards and limited resources to survive make it more fun. Because beyond combat, there are survival mechanics like hunger and thirst and fatigue, and they add another layer of tension, ensuring that every minute kind of matters. Do they want to get into this battle? Do they need to battle to be able to get some water? What's going on there? Um, it's kind of fun. And the system emphasizes high stakes encounters um, without bogging down the importance of the narrative too much, which I kind of like. So the world is filled with dangers. I mean, obviously, for their like rogue AI cults to biomechanical monstrosities. The encounters are varied and challenging, and the drones are fun to play with and kind of dangerous to keep an eye out for. And it will keep players on their toes the whole time. There are threat tables, um, and they are the GM's best friend here, offering, offering endless possibilities for dynamic and unpredictable encounters that can happen at any moment during your gameplay. As a quick start tip, make sure you use environmental hazards in your very first combat to show the players that the world around them is just as dangerous as the enemy in front of them. I mean, like, think about a battle on a large, broken bridge. Count me in. Is it for you? If you enjoy tactical, high-stakes gameplay um, with, you know, without a heavy combat focus, and the system strikes the perfect balance of survival and narrative combat. For me, yes, 8 out of 10. Game Mastering. All right, GMs, you're going to love the tools that are provided here. From scene creation guides to full-on detailed NPCs in this book, the system encourages collaborative storytelling the whole way, which is fun, and it makes it even accessible for first-time game masters because of all the things that you are provided here. You can plan super detailed journeys, or you can completely improv on the fly if you're familiar with this kind of world. If you're not familiar with the world, make sure to do some prep here. And you can also just let the player's choices kind of shape the narrative as you go. As always, and this one kind of encourages that because of everything you're given. Flip to a page in the book, you're good to go. As a quick start tip... Start small with a few pre-planned scenes and then let the rest of the character's choices guide the story as you go. Especially if you're going for a long-winded campaign, like 12 episodes here, that's what you're going to want to do and you will end up more comfortable by the end. Is it for you? If you enjoy flexible, player-driven storytelling as a GM, then this system provides all the support that you need. Especially if you are interested in this dystopian world and you are prepared to read it and love it and eat it up, then yes, get it. Gameplay and replayability. So each session here is going to feel unique thanks to this journey structure. There's a level of roguelite here where you can actually play multiple different campaigns and have some fun with it. And whether you completely follow the pre-written adventures or create your own, there is endless potential here for fresh, engaging gameplay every time you start a new campaign. The mix of narrative depth and simple mechanics ensures that no two campaigns will ever feel the same, especially with the amount of things you're provided here that you can use. Conclusion. In summary, The Electric State is a stunningly crafted TTRPG that blends emotional storytelling with streamlined mechanics. And whether you are new to RPGs or a seasoned player, it's totally worth trying, especially if you're into a dystopian apocalypse like this. With its haunting atmosphere and unique mechanics and honestly endless replayability here, this game deserves a spot on your shelf and in your collection, in my opinion. Especially if you said yes to any of the questions we asked previously. I think my only gripe here is, you know, I, the book itself, the overlay in the books, I mean, the way everything's laid out. I've seen some better layouts before, but the art really kind of makes up for it. There's like some weird duct taping. <laughs> it's like art in a couple sections of the book that I didn't really like, but I know what they're going for here. And it is really easy to read because of the way the layout's fairly simple. So that is a plus, actually. So take that with a grain of salt. With an overall score from me of 8.8, .8, out of 10, The Electric State is going to stand out as one of the most memorable RPGs of this year. I would grab your copy now using our drive through RPG link if you want to support the channel. Do leave a like if you did find this video helpful or entertaining. It does help out the show. And again, comment below and let us know any quick start tips that you have. And what dystopian TTRPGs are you currently into? Should I review them and overview them? I don't know. Let me know. Until next time, my friends... Take a seat on the couch and roll initiative. Thanks for watching.